The sleek exterior of Blendtec's headquarters in Orem, Utah, offers no hint of the truly odd stuff that takes place inside. When company founder Tom Dixon asks, Will it blend? That is the question. Glow sticks, Bic lighters, even iPads get tossed into the company's smash hit product, the Total Blender. The videos, a YouTube sensation, were born out of Tom's actual product tests. I'd take two by twos and marbles and, and I'd try to break the blender because we want an indestructible blender. Whoa! And he built one. Tom himself has proved pretty indestructible as well, creating Blendtec from the rubble of his kitchen mill business and surviving a potentially crippling patent infringement case. Executive Vice President Richard Galbraith, who's known Dixon since middle school, says Tom has a long history of coming from behind. You know, you had the kids who were the high flyers academically. Tom was never in that group. I'm dyslexic and I'm ADHD, so I spent a lot of time in the corner. But I'll tell you, over the last 50 years, he is perhaps one of the smartest people I've ever known. He has an incredible ability with gears and physics and motors and making things work. His blenders, with their three horsepower motors, are just the latest creation from a guy who was seemingly born curious about mechanisms and speed. I've always put big engines on little things, from go-karts to motorcycles, and always had to go fast. <laughs> In the mid-1970s, Tom, who also enjoyed making his own bread from scratch, put his inventive streak to work, developing a high-speed mill to grind grain at home replacing the grinding stones with fine-toothed stainless steel parts and a better power source. And I thought, you know, if I could use a vacuum cleaner motor to make flour, that would be a major breakthrough. Eventually, he found investors to pour about $350,000 into his invention. But there was a problem. No investment casting foundry in the world could make the part. Solution? Do it himself. So he started his own foundry called California Precision Casting in the San Francisco Bay Area. So this is a rotor and a stator, and those parts go together. They don't touch. He patented the technology in his product called the Kitchen Mill and introduced it in 1979. Sales took off. 79 to 81, we'd done 10 million in sales. Still, Tom says some of his investors claimed the product just wasn't up to snuff, and that's not all. They sued my wife and I for $800,000 to try to get the patent away from me. He says that suit was eventually dropped, but later he found several companies using his technology in their own mills. So he sued for patent infringement. Federal court judge ruled validity of my patent and literal infringement. They tried to make life absolutely miserable for him financially, but uh, Tom had the patent. Tom says he was also blindsided by an attorney who bought into his company and eventually became the majority shareholder. So one day he announced to me that he was taking control of the company and that I better behave myself or I'd be out on the street. And so he fired me. Kicked out of his first company, Tom moved his family to Utah. So I figured, okay, we have the best mill in the world. I've got the patent on it. Let's make mills and let's come up with a multi-function kitchen machine to compete with Bosch in Germany and, of course, the KitchenAid. Trouble was, Dixon and his newly founded company, k -Tech, didn't have the capital to develop the precision mold for the sturdy blender jar that was key to the product he envisioned. Those jars are, are costing between $80,000 and $112,000 to make a mold. So I designed a blender jar the, the handle just comes straight down. And so I can just do a two-part mold for $40,000 made in America that comes apart and you just pull the jar off the core of that mold. Soon he discovered the blender portion of his multifunction home machine was being used in restaurants. So I thought, oh, you think that's cool. I can build a really powerful commercial blender. It was the beginning of Blendtec. This time, Tom developed an even higher-powered blender with microprocessors and pre-programmed cycles for home and commercial use. Smoothie shops, restaurants, and coffee houses were eager to try the total blender in the 1990s, from big names like Starbucks to a relative newcomer called Jamba Juice. But they said, we don't have any money. And I said, look, just give me a nickel every time you do a blend. They got up to 336 stores 
and they were doing 50 million smoothies a year. Even at $1,000 a piece commercially, the blenders became a hot item. Still, Tom continued to tinker with its design. We developed a jar called the Wild Side Jar. And this jar has a huge blade. It's four inches in diameter, and, but most importantly, it has a wild side. And this was the breakthrough in blending technology. Business was booming and production in full swing when Tom got some devastating news. Some of our accounts are saying, well, Vitamix has a jar that's very similar. They copied the jar, and this is their copy of the jar. It's exactly, it, it nests in, in our jar, and they both have single blades with winglets. Tom's wife, Beverly, says initially he wasn't looking to sue top competitor and industry titan Vitamix. They weren't responding to requests to abandon the infringement. When those requests were not being met, then I think he felt like he had no choice. They were going into our very best accounts and stealing those accounts away from us with our own technology. In February 2006, Blendtec sued Vitamix for patent infringement. In October of that same year, the Blendtec videos, created on a $50 marketing budget, hit YouTube. Our sales went crazy. People think if this blender can destroy all of this stuff, this can do anything with food. Orders for Blendtec's $400 home machine rapidly rose, even as commercial accounts slid because of the copied blender jars. Then in 2010, a federal jury in Utah found Vitamix guilty of patent infringement. And then stopped Vitamix from making the infringing jar. That's when things changed. Vitamix lost an appeal in 2012 and has been ordered to pay Blendtec $24 million in damages. Despite the legal battles, in 2011, Blendtec sales had built to around $65 million a year. Our growth each year is in the tens of millions of dollars. And they expect even higher growth, since they're back in more commercial spaces like Planet Smoothie. Now Tom and Beverly have some time to stop and savor their own smoothies. Oh, we sneak the vitamins in. Yeah. While he begins work on his next big idea. His mind is always always looking at how something can be done better. Now who's going to copy this? <laughs> <laughs>